Good evening, it's old Rawhide from CBC Toronto, the Friday edition of the Rawhide Show. What we're going to do this evening is this. We are going to play you with what Easter is just a short distance away. We're going to play you perhaps the most incredible tape of a broadcast in the CBC archives. The CBC executives don't speak too much about this tape. It, it's so incredible it lies in the realm of fantasy. But we were able to obtain this, and in just a few moments we're going to let you listen to it. Some years ago, Marvin Melabell was talking to me. I well remember the day. It was over a cup of coffee in the CBC canteen. And Marvin said that around Christmas time we hear a lot of interviews with Santa. We see Santa in the stores and everything. Very little has been done, uh, research or documentary evidence of the Easter Bunny. And I remember we all left at Marvin as he started to do some research on the Easter Bunny. He felt surely there, just as there is a North Pole as the home of Santa, there must be a home for the Easter Bunny. He checked with people such as John Fisher and Kate Aiken, who had done a lot of traveling, but they unfortunately had never come across the Easter Bunny. The Canadian Geographic Society carried out quite an exhaustive research that year to try to determine the exact location of the, the home, the borough of the Easter Bunny. But it wasn't until we got Mary Grannon of the CBC, who does all the stories, the Maggie Muggins series. She and Mr. McGarrity and Fitzgerald Fieldmouse proved invaluable. Mr. McGarrity, the man who worked in the garden with the hoe, I'm sure you all have heard of him. He's a friend of Maggie Muggins. He knows where the firefly gets his light and where Jack Frost spends his summers. And things. He gave us some inside information. Marvin went to the South Pole and recorded this broadcast. It's an incredible thing. We're just going to let it run for you now. Here's the tape. To the listening cabin, this is Marvin Bellabell, speaking to you from the entrance of an underground burrow down in the ice fields of the South Pole. And I have beside me the person or thing, I don't know quite how to address him, for which I have come these many, many miles to interview. I would like to introduce, ladies and gentlemen, the Easter Bunny. Sir, or rather Bunny, I suppose, how long have you been living down here at the South Pole? Jim has been uh, down here ever since I got the Easter egg concession. You see, me biggest rival is old Santa Claus. Boy, he ain't got no use for me, that guy. You see, years and years ago, oh, this would be upwards of 50 years ago, I used to work for old Fat. Oh, uh, Santa. Yeah, well, okay, Santa. I was one of these little elves up there at the North Pole, making toys all year round. And a couple of, uh, oh, about 50, 60 years ago, I got fed up. Well, I mean, there's no chance of advancement. There's no five-day week. And all them other smart little elves and smart Alex and little elves and gnomes there, they was making fun of me, and I had me fill of it. Excuse me, why would the other elves be making fun of you? Well, I, I was the only rabbit. Oh, I see. You didn't, uh, there was no metamorphosis. You didn't... No, there wasn't. I was a rabbit up there, and, of course, you know, the way... People are, they started to taunt me. So I started out on the oak. I just said, if Santa can build up this whole Christmas thing, I'm going to do the same thing. And I looked around for a national holiday. I thought maybe Mother's Day I'd work on. Uh, that was no good. Fast field day, we, we went right down the list, and finally we hit on Easter. So I took with me, I left uh, Santa's bench, never forgave me for this, and I took about ten of his best little elves, and we got a patent, uh, we took it out, on the Easter egg, and we set up down here at the South Pole. I want to be exactly the opposite, the old Santa. So we went to the South Pole. The old guys never forgive me, never forgive me, because I got him over a barrel. Oh, he's fuming. How do you, how do you mean Santa's fuming? <clears throat> Boy, the sun's down out here melting the snow, the storm's died down. Oh, there comes the wind again. Well, Santa's fuming at me because I, I swiped his laugh. You swiped his laugh? Yes. You know that oh, ho, ho? Oh, yes, yes. Well, that's, uh, that's getting to be as much a part of Easter now as it is of Christmas. You see, about two years ago, I swiped that land. 
Uh, Santa forgot to get a copywriter. Yeah, he slipped up on the job, so which means that I can go around Easter time, oh, 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 and all over the place. He can't do a thing. But you uh, just let him try tending Easter eggs at Christmas time. I'd have an injunction slapped on him so fast he wouldn't know uh, what, what, what happened. Well, I see. Santa then cannot bring children. I didn't realize this. Santa can't bring children chocolate eggs at Christmas time. No, no. He's hopping mad, too, because he's losing days. All the little kids, they're writing letters to old Santa asking for chocolate eggs, and he can't do a thing about it. He's stuck. He's stuck with them candy canes and old apples and stuff like that. Oh, you've got to get up here in the morning, I'll tell you, uh, to beat the old Easter bunny. Uh, tell me, sir, uh, brother bunny, uh, uh, how do you make the chocolate eggs at Easter time, these chocolate bunnies? Like... Well, the, the elves and gnomes, they make the chocolate bunnies. But them chocolate eggs now, they, they ain't made. Them's made. The chocolate eggs are, are laid. Yes, a lot of people think they are made, manufactured, but they are they are laid. We we used to we used to make them, but it was too slow. So I wrote oh this be about ten years ago now. I wrote to the CBC Farm Broadcast Department uh, for some pamphlets. And of course, all we do now is we keep this big flock of white Leghorns, and uh, thanks to CBC Farm Broadcast pamphlet, we feed these white Leghorns a mixture of milk, cocoa, and dextrose all year round. So by about the middle of March, we got it all time this diet. They start laying the first batch of chocolate eggs. Thousands of big ones, little ones. Well, what about the little chocolate chickens? Which it is the time. Uh, are they hatched from the chocolate eggs? Now let's not get ridiculous about this. That, that's a that's the kind of a question old Santa Claus would ask. How do you expect to get a chocolate chicken out of a chocolate egg? Let's not be greedy about this whole thing. <laughs> The little elves have to meet them chocolate chickens. They take them out of raw chocolate with little hammers and chisels. We stole all the tools from Santa's workshop when we left them uh, years ago. Uh, may I ask you this, uh, sir, Bonnie? How does Easter compare with Christmas as far as popularity and uh, public enthusiasm goes? Well, of course, you've got to remember, in all fairness to myself, that, that old Slav there, uh, he's got about six centuries head start on me. Uh, you, you mean Santa? Yeah, old Slav Santa. He knows he he knows when he's got a good thing going for him, and he never lets up. He never lets up. Boy, he's going be hey, he's going fifty two weeks a year, this guy, working on Christmas and built it up. But you give me oh another twenty five years, we'll catch him. Sure as fate we'll catch him. Me stealing that old ho ho of his that that really hurt him. He let the patent lapse on that, and I've got the laugh now, and we can use it each time. Of course, old Santa, he's a hound for publicity. I'll give him his credit, boy. All them Christmas songs. But we're starting to move into the musical field ourselves now with uh, Easter songs. Uh, you've heard Here Comes Peter Cottontail. Oh, yeah, that's a great favor. Yes. We're also, also bringing out uh, All I Want for Christmas to be, or rather Easter, is me two back key. You see, he can't get us there. He's got the Christmas song, but he can't nail us on the uh, infringement of copyright because we say back key instead of front key. I see. Oh, we're crafty. Well, of course, there is a wealth of beautiful Easter music by Handel. Oh, yes, a lot of nice music by Handel, but it don't move eggs. You can play them there or materials there, but they don't sell eggs. What if, we got to get more Easter songs on the market, like, with a commercial appeal, like, uh, I see Mama kissing Easter Bunny. We're, we're working that one now, set it to music. Uh, the Night Before Easter, a little poem that we're going to get out. And uh, the song that'll be coming out this Easter, we'll flood the uh, North American market with is uh, it's a dead, catchy little tune called uh, Deck the Halls with Pussy Willows. You know. Uh, uh, tell me, Bunny, what is the reason behind this hiding of Easter eggs? I mean, Santa always leaves his toys at Christmas time right out in the open around the Christmas tree, but you always hide the eggs, don't you? Well, I tell you, that's a sort of a hangover from the Depression days. You see, them Depression days was tough. Oh, they was miserable. Hit the Easter egg to make it pretty hard. Of course, old Slob, old uh, fat, old Daddy Warbucks. Uh, please, Santa. Yeah, yeah. He just rolled out, you know. <clears throat> He's loaded, see. Old loaded. He's been in business for centuries. Didn't bother him none. But like I say, all through the 30s, Easter eggs was pretty hard to come by. So I used to go around Easter time and hide all the eggs. Oh, I, I, I don't mean just uh, shoving them under cushions the way we do now or putting them in a flower pot. Back in the 30s, we couldn't afford to lose them eggs. We had to use them again next year. So we used to figure out some real nifty places. We, we tear up a cement basement. That was a favorite trick. Tear up a whole basement, drop the Easter eggs in, and fill it in again. Kids would never get them. <clears throat> and we take the back off a radio. 
brought back Easter egg in, screwed all up again. And we used to put a lot of eggs on uh, heavy-duty wire around the house. You know, right in on the bare wires. Kid wouldn't, kids wouldn't dare go near them. Uh, then you came back later and got the eggs. Yes, Easter Monday. Easter Monday, we'd come around, we'd round the eggs up, save them for next year. So I got habit forming, you see. <clears throat> I, I see. Oh, the, uh, the Easter egg business is booming now, but uh, we still hide them. It's sort of a, you know, it's a conditioned response, what they call it. Of course, we make it easy for the kids to find them now, even though we hide them. But like I say, back in the 30s, oh, our books, our books were balanced so fine in then depressed years, if so much as one kid found one egg and edit, we'd have been finished. Washed out, cleared out, ruined. I see. Well, I think we have time for just one more question, and that is, how do you get along with Dr. Brock Chisholm? I'm referring to the eminent Canadian psychiatrist who some years ago had a bit of a run in the Santa Claus when uh, he intimated that the Santa Claus uh, perhaps wasn't... Uh, Anything more than just a legend. Oh, uh, Brock Chisholm, piece of cake, never bothers me. He's the right guy, a uh, right guy. Well, after all, you are in the same debatable category as Santa Claus. I mean, are you legend or fact, Easter Bunny? Look, Slob asks... S- Santa, please. Okay, Santa asks for everything he gets. He, he... <clears throat> I never had no trouble with Brock Chisholm, because I'm quiet. I'm, I'm quiet. I don't, uh, unpretentious. I don't go around looking for trouble. But not Sla or Santa. Oh, no. Oh, Santa, he's there pitching. Three months before Christmas, he's oh, ho, ho, and all over the place. He's bouncing kids on his knees. I never touch a kid. Never pick one up. Can't stand him. I mean, I don't like him on my knees. Uh, you've never heard of Easter Bunny bounce the kid on his knee. <clears throat> and as Santa goes around, he turns up about eight stores at once, showing off. Just pure ostentation. Naturally, he's going to attract attention. Oh, that guy can't even come into a house like anybody else. Does he go in the front door and come in quietly? The pig's eye, he does. <clears throat> no, it's got to be a production. Running over the rooftops, crawling down chimneys, busting out in the living room with soot all over the place, hollering at the reindeer, ringing bells. He's an extrovert. Let's face it. And it didn't take Brock Chisholm long to spot him. Oh, no. Boy, he... Brock Chisholm, he don't have to lay old slop. Santa, please. He, he don't have to lay old Santa on a couch to, to figure out him and uh, find out what's... And put sodium pentothal in him to figure out what's making him tick. Oh, sir, boy, I, I play it nice and straight. I get along fine with Brock Chisholm, no trouble at all. Well, I'd like to thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Sorry, Bunny, uh, for letting me talk to you on this uh, roving reporter broadcast. Well, it's been a pleasure. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to give you as an egg to take back to your kids or something. But like I say, I mean, we've only been in the business about fifty years. We're building it up, and. Uh, of course, uh, <clears throat> we're just sort of feeling our way along. You know, things, we're not too flush, so... Don't worry about giving me an egg at all. You don't have to uh, feel badly about that. Well, that's, uh... I mean, if, if, if this was the North Pole, <laughs> you'd be staggering out here with bicycles, electric trains, toys, you know what I mean, ostentation, big production, big operation, public relations there. Madison, Madison Avenue touched there, old slobs working. I... Uh, Santa. Well, we'd like again to say thank you very much, uh... Sir, <laughs> Bunny, it's hard to know just what to call you. Call me anything at all. Anything at all. I know how to get along with it. Well, thank you. And and say hello to Dr. Brock uh, Chisholm when you see him. Are you up there? Yes, I, I will. He's a right guy. And uh, <clears throat> i tell you what, if you did me a little favor. Yes? Tell him when you see him, tell him you saw me. I mean, like in, in the flesh, uh, that you were talking to me. I'd hate him to think that I was uh, <clears throat> somebody's mother or father. Like some other guy I know. <laughs> oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Merry Easter. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Merry Easter. Well, this is Marvin Melabel returning you from the South Pole to our studios. Well, that is a replaying of this incredible tape that is dwelling in the archives of the CBC. The year Marvin found the Easter Bunny. We've tried on occasion since our convention is gone out desperately anxious to find that, but nobody has ever found him since. But that doesn't mean he isn't down there in his little burrow in the South Pole with his little elves making Easter eggs for you folks out there in Radioland. We hope you'll join us on Monday when we begin another week of the Rawhide Show. This is the CBC Radio Network. <laughs>